Today we're going to be tying a fly called Al's Rat. Al's Rat was developed by a gentleman named Al Miller who fished on the Little Lehigh River in southeastern Pennsylvania. Little Lehigh is a really interesting fishery, runs right through the middle of Allentown, but it's one of the best fisheries in Pennsylvania. And Al fished it and lived a life that I think we all wish we could live. He fished pretty much every day, all year round. I'm going to put a link below to some information on Al Miller. He passed away in 2008, but he developed a couple of really, really unique fly patterns that are very effective, not only on the Little Lehigh, but on other spring creeks and, and on rivers throughout the world. Uh, Al's rat is designed to mimic the pupal stage of the midge, or the Corona mid, as it's more technically known. Midges are these swarming insects that you see around bodies of water where you get this, this sort of cloud of little black dots. You can't ever really see the individual fly, but you, you know they're there because the swarm is there. Uh, they have a real interesting life cycle. They begin uh, life while well, the eggs are laid and then they be become larvae when they hatch. And they, be they spend time as larvae burrowing in the bottom of the river. Now the fish do eat the larvae. Uh, they get kicked up, they get swept downstream by the currents, the fish will eat them. But what's really one of the fish's favorite things to eat are the pupa because once the larva turns into the pupa it has to swim up to the surface, it gets stuck in the film and the adult emerges from, from the pupa. So this fly is mimicking that film stuck pupal form. Uh, it's, this is most commonly fished by uh, putting it on a very light tippet, an 8x or 9x tippet, and greasing it so that it floats in the film and you give it a twitch once in a while. It's really a very, very effective pattern. So it only requires two materials. The first is muskrat, and I have here a, a whole muskrat pelt. I buy it this way because I use a lot of muskrat in a number of fly patterns. You can buy small patches of muskrat from the fly tying suppliers. One patch will be enough for you to tie owl's rats for the rest of your life. Muskrat is a really interesting material. It's soft. It's got these, these long guard hairs that you can see here. Uh, those are useful in a lot of patterns, but what we're interested in is the underfur, which is this very soft, gray, fluffy stuff that's there after you cut away the guard hairs. And that's what we're going to be using as a dubbing on the, the head of this fly. The other material is the tying thread, and that is a material called monocord. Uh, this is brown monocord and it is by hopefully you can see that it's by rumpf r-u-m-p-f uh, it's very important that monocord is used in this pattern and i'll explain why in a bit so we're going we're gonna to just tie this the way that al tied it the way that mr miller tied it i never met mr miller so uh i wish i did because i'd like to ask him some things about this pattern so we're going to start it uh, about two eye lengths back from the from the eye, and we'll just get that started, and then we're going to wind back to about the halfway point, and we're going to wind forward. Notice the tag is still there, and come forward, and then we'll come back again, and then we're going to go all the way back to the bend. not pausing to take the tag off, and then we're going to come all the way back forward again. And hopefully you can see the nice segmentation that's being formed by the monocord as we tie. And the nice sort of carrot-shaped taper that we've got. All right, we'll let the thread hang there. We will trim away the tag. And now we're going to go to dubbing. And for the dubbing, again, it's going to be the muskrat underfur. Uh, very lightly dubbed, so we're just going to put a small bit in there. If there's any guard hairs, try to pick them out. They'll they'll pop out, and you can pick them out later. And this this is not going to be too tightly dubbed. You know, we're not like doing a dry fly dubbing. This is uh, more of a loose sort of thorax that we're forming, and that's about enough. Take away any excess come forward I like to do a turn or two in front of the dubbing and then we'll go straight into the whip finish now that dubbing is going to mimic the the sort of fat end of the fly so the flies tend to be skinny 
on the bottom. Got a little bit too much. I'm just gonna try to trim that away. There we go. So the flies tend to be skinny with with fat heads and sort of feathery extensions coming off the heads, and uh, that does a really nice job of imitating the natural. Now, really simple to tie, very quick and easy. I'm going to tie one more because there's a lesson to be learned in this fly in terms of thread management, and I, I think it's really interesting. Now, I've never had the chance to talk to Al Miller about how he tied this fly, um, or why he tied it this way, and, you know, maybe that he didn't care. He just, he tied it, it worked, and he continued to tie it. So I've got another hook in the, in the vise. By the way, these are uh, Allen F001 dry fly hooks in size 20. Uh, but I find it fascinating that he was very insistent on that type of tying that I just showed where you start, you go to the middle, you come back forward. It's a bit unusual for a tire to do that. And on the use of monocord. Now if you look at the monocord as I drape it over the hook here, you can hopefully see the material is actually flat. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like a very fine floss. And we'll start it there and we'll begin Again, back to the halfway point, back up. And I will put a link below to a video of Al Miller tying this fly. So you can see that the steps I'm using here are pretty much the steps that he used. And I'll come all the way back to the bend and forward again. Now, what's happening is with every turn, you are actually cording up that monocord. You're, you're putting a twist in it with every turn. And that creates this segmentation that you see. This is very important to the fly pattern. As I let go of my bobbin now, it's going to spin to, to unwind that, uh, that those twists. You can't see it, but I promise you it is actually spinning. So by cording that up, you almost have, by the time you, you do the front up and back and then all the way back again, you've, you've basically corded it up to the point where when you come forward that last time, you've created a rib. For the fly and the reason the tag isn't cut away is because you know most tires would drop the bobbin and cut the tag away and it would untwist so by leaving that there until the end you are able to create that nice quartered effect you will not get that effect if you use something like uh uni thread it, it's really got to be this monocord in order for you to to get that kind of an effect and i highly recommend if you tie this that you do tie it with brown monocord all right, so now we will dub the fly again, just a, a pinch of muskrat under fur. Really do not need much at all. You don't want to overdub this fly. That looks good. Sweep everything back. A couple turns in front and go right into a three or four turn whip finish. If I can catch the thread in my whip finish tool. There we go. And there you have it. That is Al's Ret. A very effective imitation of the carotid pupa.